Over the last few years, Oxygen Esports has usually managed to get off to hot starts during NAL stages. They've won all three of their first games to start this one. But today, they might meet their first real test, as Luminosity have suddenly sprung up into top four status and now will surely make a fierce bid to stay there. Welcome back to day five of the NAL. I'm Jacob, he's Laxing, he is Jesse, and this is an undefeated OXG team. Not the first time we've seen them do something at the very start of a stage, but they've never been able to successfully carry it through and LG are looking to be the real first speed bump in their road to playoffs. Well, I guess the important thing here for Oxygen compared to their most previous season, this is a drastic improvement for the team. So it's good to see this success coming out early. The season's not done yet. There's still a lot of games still to be played, but to still be coming out 3-0 and in the dominating fashion that they are, I mean, that's something to be proud about. Yeah, and I mean, how often is it that a team goes 3-0 and and then loses to a team that's very it's never uh, happened. below them in the standings? It's never happened before. It hasn't happened in at least two hours. <laughs> so I'm sure that Oxygen are going to feel very confident coming in against Luminosity today. So far, the top-ranked overall team in the league against the team currently sitting in number fifth. But the other two stats to pay attention to, it's the second highest defensive win rate team against the best defensive win rate team. So whenever we're on those sides, those are going to be some tough nuts to crack. Well, it's who's going to find out and who's going to be the stronger attacker on this side. If we saw the last game, the attacking sides were not favored in any capacity. It came down to a defensive game entirely. And now you got the two best defending teams to be able to see who is still going to be <laughs> the best defending team. Yep. Yeah, and both these teams hitting over 70% on that defense right now. So they're really, really hitting those high numbers. You expect that will go down with more games played for both of them. But still, to be, I think it's 75 and 71% respectively for Auction LG. They're feeling very, very good. LG on a pretty good streak right now. They've won their last two. Their last one was that win over M80 on Skyscraper just last week. It was a huge comeback. They were down 5-2. Then Hat explodes with something like 10 kills over three rounds to help drag Luminosity back from the grave and get them a dub. So a really, really good way to start their stage. Yeah, I mean, LG, this is the best way possible to start your stage compared to the last previous stage. I mean, this team, I think what really puts that into perspective is there's four players on this team that have tons of experience, whether that's in the T2, T3 scene, and then you bring Hat on, a player that had very high success when he first came on, then had a, then he fell a little short, was out of the spotlight, but then now coming back into this new roster of LG, he's back in that spotlight and performing extremely well, and even in that game that we saw the other day against M80, I mean, the ace from him was insane. I believe this may not be, is this the ace clip? I'm looking for where he's at. This no, was not this specific. He's got a double kill. But I think these are broadly the highlights. But this is still just showing all the players specifically yeah. just performing extremely well. I mean, Hat, once again, mm -hmm. I mean, now he's at 12. He was just at 10. He's at 12. He keeps going up. He's at 13. <laughs> I mean, Hat is the player, and the ace that he had was a beautifully displayed ace. I mean, granted, M80 played that pretty horribly, but it's still, it's, it shows the type of players that he can focus in on those 1v1s and single out targets and come out on top of those 1v1s. We talked to Eddie earlier about what sort of moves they made in the offseason and how they were looking to turn a team that's all really connected with one another out of lobby and in lobby into something beneficial. And look how, look how much better or on track they are with where they were last stage. Yeah, I mean, I think coming into this one, uh, it really shows that LG have been working a lot together as a team, especially like coming up with a lot of these plans. On defense especially, it feels like they always have this like really great idea of how they want to hold, how they want to make that uh, you know, anti-execute happen. Uh, we saw that on Clubhouse, we saw that on Skyscraper. I think on Attack, things have gotten a little bit scrappier. Sometimes things don't exactly go their way and then they got to throw the plan out. And I think that late round kind of adaptation hasn't always been there for Luminosity. But I mean, there's a reason why they're the second best defensive team in the league right now. And uh, I think it really does come down to the preparation. Definitely. And what I also love about these guys being the rookies, the underdogs to the league. The young is, team. Yeah, they aren't scared to get aggressive on those defensive sites where some teams that might come into the league, you know, they'll play a little scared against some of these teams, but LG will get straight in your face. They don't care. They're showing you why they're in the pro league. They're showing you why they're here. They're showing you why they're an underdog and not to be slept on for that matter. And nobody did that better last week in that M80 game than Hat did. It started with his Mira ace and then just descended from there, but this specific moment was where M80 seemed like they broke. This guy's a monster. You uh, really can't underestimate him. <laughs> I mean, this is what I was talking about. Like, the individual skill from him here to be able to single out every single 1v1 here. And it, sure, it does come down to M80 playing this bad and not working together. But the fact that Hat can figure out from what direction each of these M80 players were coming from and be able to single that out and put that in a winning situation for him, I mean, it shows the skill and professionalism that Hat has as a player. Dude, this last 1v1 uh, to complete the ace, I was like, oh, it's Spoit. Spoit doesn't lose this. And then I saw the flick that Hat made. I was like, oh, 
my bad. Anybody loses that. That's ridiculous. So, but if it wasn't for that defensive performance, they probably wouldn't be as high defensively had it not been for how that half just slid their way. M80 didn't win a single attack round once that ace happened. So for LG, it's really good, but they need to prove today that it's not a matter of streakiness and they can keep that thing going into today. And you don't want to just rely on one person and Hat might have been that one person, yeah. but still, I mean, at the end of the day, it was a performance to, that's very worth noting. Yeah. Here's the problem. They're facing a currently undefeated OXG team who themselves have had some questions just concerning new team coming in, or new, new players coming in. How is everyone going to gel together? So far, the answer has been perfectly nine points over three games. So it could be argued just on paper, this team is doing everything exactly right. I mean, they blew me out of the water. I originally thought with them losing Fox, they were gonna take a pretty big hit because that is a pretty big hit, but they have found the way that they wanted to to play and to work in Diaz and Gomez and how to figure out how they want to play around that. And they're coming out the gates hot. They're 3-0. and So there's not really anything that I can critique and be like, oh, well, these guys don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing, and they're still finding success. Yeah, I think for me, it's been the conversions from them, right? When they get an advantage on the side of auction, they've been so, so clean at making sure they follow that out through the rest of the round. They're not going to let aggressive plays catch them off guard. They're not going to throw those advantages away. They're really consistent at taking that lead in a round and making sure it turns into a round win. I think that comes down to while they are a newer team and while they do have maybe new IGLs going back and forth with it, they have all a lot of experience playing together. Whether that's on M80 or on Oxygen, they're very used to each other as players and so I think that is showing through in their gameplay. They have two players who are still in the top five ratings wise. One of them is Diaz. The other is newer, but we haven't had to talk about him very much even though he has a lot of clippable moments. But what specifically do we need to highlight on him? I mean, I think for Newers, it's been the way that he's been able to make these moves on defense. A lot of these clips you're noticing are on Azami. He has two real favorite operators that he'll play. One of them is Azami, the other is right there, Warden. He loves to move around, use these little bits of cover to his advantage. They're great guns, of course, as well that he's able to utilize. Uh, again, I just think it comes down to Oxygen on these defensive sides, making sure that once they get that opening pick, once they're feeling confident in a round, they don't do dumb plays to throw it away. And I want to show these operator stats specifically. Azami, about a third of the rounds played, seven and two KD. Warden, seven and three, Katie. Again, about a third of the round. All other operators, though, only four and three. And it's important to note that despite Elzami getting nerfed, despite her being a little bit weaker than in previous patches, it is the permaban of Luminosity, which means he's unlikely to be able to play that operator today. So how satisfied are we with the OXG changes right now? We'll take a look at what moves they made coming into this stage. Yes, they lose Fish. Yes, they lose Fox, but your assessment so far? I mean, I still think they're performing extremely well. Again, they have a 3-0. Yep. They did lose Fox, sure. But again, you have two players right now, specifically of Newers and Diaz, that are in the top five, both being third and fifth place. And then on top of that, it's two different play styles. You have Diaz playing a more supportive role, mm -hmm. still topping those charts. And then you have Newers on an aggressive role, taking those initial entries. So on both fronts of attack and defense, you have two players that are performing at the highest level and being in the top five rated players. But let's add a caveat to this, because nothing is perfect for Oxygen. The three teams they've beaten to get this undefeated streak are all teams that coming into this play day were bottom three in the league. Luminosity are on a bit of a streak at the minute, and then they have all of the remaining tough teams in the league still ahead of them right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously the schedule has been uh, very favorable to Oxygen at the start here, right? They've gotten three teams of the league who have been struggling. And I think especially with these like newer teams to play them earlier before they get all their things figured out, before they get all their ducks in a row can be quite advantageous. But I don't want to take that away from Oxygen. Obviously they played fantastic to secure those wins even though we may not value those teams that they've beaten as highly as teams like Sonics or Space Station. I, it's still a very strong performance and I think you can see that regardless of the opponents they're playing. Map is Clubhouse which is intriguing because LG are have this is now the third time that they're playing at this stage. They're one and one on it so two and one or one and two? <laughs> <laughs> so like this comes down to me with the inexperience versus experiences. There's only so much you can do to change a map or change up a strat that it's like you're really risking here of really exposing yourself or leaving yourself exposed because I don't really know how much LG is going to change here unless they're just going for straight counterplay and not really focusing more on themselves. But I mean, we literally heard it today when we talked to Bursa, right? Lowe's did just that. They changed up their clubhouse. They came in with an entirely new strategy and they beat Space Station because of it. So, I mean, I think it's doable. Does the streak end here for Oxygen, gentlemen, or does it continue? Predictions, ah. lax. Go. <laughs> go. Yeah, I'm going to go with Oxygen. I, I got to go with Oxygen. Acting like you're still on the payroll. Jesse? Listen, it's already happened once before, but I don't think Lightning strikes twice. I think Oxygen closes out. We don't see another upset on Club. Oh, damn. Seriously? So yeah. now when... Now when 
when LG wins, the players can clip you and be like, look at what they said. I can't, I can't look go at what back they said. 40%. The so. whole, the, the, the curse <laughs> is in effect at this point for Oxygen. If they don't win, then we know the reason why. Jacob, I'm one game behind Foxy. That percentage might look like a large gap, but it's one game, okay? I'm not, <laughs> I, technically I could make it up here, I guess. Auction went, uh, uh, Fox went Oxygen. But. I mean, it's true. The the percentage for Foxy did not go down very much by M80 taking the game against Dark Zero from earlier. So now everyone goes with the exact same pick and we'll see if they're all right or all wrong yet again. I love how these things work out. It's Pengu and Intero. Gentlemen, it's Clubhouse again. Are you guys excited or what? Always a good time getting to go to Germany and see the beautiful sights of Clubhouse. I don't think the analysts quite sell how close of a match this could potentially be. I mean, all three said that OXG would win. Yeah. LG is a team that has not been doing that poorly. They're actually doing quite well. They were in fourth place to start the day. So it's not like it's a, you know, OXG beating up a bunch of chumps, Nick. It's <laughs> two relatively good teams. I will say, though, that OXG have three wins all in regulation. That is probably what is giving them the nod to say OXG is going to win. And frankly, I also picked OXG to win. Yeah. Did you? Or do you think LG has a shot? I, I picked OXG as well. I, I think it's kind of like the lowest game earlier where there's always a chance. It depends on, I guess, what type of LG shows up today. But also, of course, which OXG version shows up. Because while they've played great so far, there's always one game that can go sideways. Things don't go your way. The players aren't feeling it, whatever the case might be. I do think the Clubhouse is a pretty fair play for both of these two teams and how they match up. I think it's a pretty 50-50, if you will. Operator bans are playing out right now. We're not seeing anything too out of the norm. A lot of Monty bans today. It's respectable. It just kind of simplifies a lot of the rounds and how you can approach it on the attack inside. And there it is. Jesse spoke about it. Asami is LG's permanent ban, so Newer is probably not going to play that operator. He was correct. It'll be removed from action. But OHG, if they've done any prep work, which of course they have, they'll expect this. I really don't think either team right now is going to go, oh my god, they banned that operator? It's Ying, Munzi, Fenrir, Asami. This is, again, a very classic Flophouse matchup. LG banned the Ying Azami combo against Space Station, so they were accustomed to not playing with or against these operators. And then if you look at LG's matchup against Beast Coast, they banned the Azami yet again. Ying was banned against them. In their matchup against M80, Ying was off of the board, but LG wanted to ban the shield operator of Monty, mm. who OXG got rid of. So all told, LG are very used to these four operator bans, whether they're the culprits, whether they're the ones banning the Monty, whether they're the ones banning the Ying, this is a lineup that they obviously do not want to deal with, and OXG is reading into that. OXG is also getting rid of an operator that LG doesn't like dealing with. That's good news for Luminosity. I have to agree. I think the first round often kind of gives an idea of like what might happen in the matchup, you know, how are the teams feeling? One is what defensive strat will the defenders up for? You know, okay, it's clubhouse. Most teams go basement first. Sure, that's obvious. But what kind of basement are they gonna play? Are they gonna play a proactive roam like we see right now? The castle, the mute, the solace, the frost, where there's a lot of different tools being put down across the entirety of the map? Or they do the quote unquote old school SSG roam? It's about denying information, playing mute and mousy, making the attackers un unsure whether there is a roamer or not. Or will you turtle by playing all five defenders literally on the base and bumps at itself, and there's basically no roamers at all. So LG, they're, they're showing that they're happy to swing, they're happy to go for gunfights, and they're making OXG problem solve at a very high level very early on. So let's see if OXG are warmed up and ready. They did not drone the catwalk frost trap. I'm pretty sure Newers might get caught if he walks up. I'm a little bit sad that he doesn't. He's gonna go downstairs instead. Could be a funny moment there. But OXT, they spent the first minute joining the inch of the building and Gomez finds silence. So good start here for the attackers. Well, silence Rome is soulless. Ends up as so many soulless before him and so many soulless likely afterwards where oh. yeah, you're gonna get picked off early. Frost Newers, by the way, now Frost bleeding out. It is a first down Frostmat. That is, that's something else to put a frost mat at the top of the rafters. It was, uh, it was mis droned <laughs> earlier by OXG. They kind of jumped over it. And then, yeah, Neurosy pays the price, unfortunately. 
not Unlucky. just damage that's done, but also the debuff. Newers will now be slower and will make noise and will be bleeding out as time goes on. For an operator like Ash, who's supposed to be <laughs> super can't sprint fast, that. look at that, the trail of blood behind him. Yeah, so he literally cannot sprint for like 60 seconds. And Neuros is literally your classic like all aim Ash main. Uh, he's pretty smart these days, but he like he runs around, he seeks gun fights. This is a massive nerf to Neuros in this round, and it could actually be pretty uh, pretty damaging because who's gonna now lead the charge? I mean, sure, you got Gomez in the bug, you got Yawk on the ground, you got other players that can step up, but Neuros is normally that spirit for the team that won't be in play in this round. Dream taking some damage now as Diaz marches himself oh. down the stairs, but whether there's a camera or just some information from the sounds, Diaz sees the nitro cell, shoots it out of the air. Now long range, fire burning, not removed from Eddie. The bees are there as well. Now Eddie's gone from that spot. OXG lose Dream oh. to Kicks Rose, shotgun. It's all up to Hat as the last remaining player from LG and Newer's quick peeks him and down he goes. LG. Unable to hang on to that defense, and what on earth is that cam from Newers? <laughs> okay, hold, hold on a second here. Can bring we that up. backtrack? Can we bring up, uh, hold on a second. Can we bring up Newers cam for a second? Here we go. Hold on. Waiting for that's it. Not that's not Newers. That's not That's not Newers. That's, that's Yawk. Ah, there, there it go. is. He's hiding from us. He's a shy guy. Mm hmm. Damn. I mean, despite the frost map, despite being 20 HP very early on, Neuro's got a 3k. Who would have thought? He just walked in 20 HP, bang, 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 bang. Simple as that. And when you're up against a team like LG, I think most people go, okay, LG, they're gonna shoot back, they're gonna fight, like, that's what they're really good at. And I wouldn't disagree. But when you look at how that round played out, it's not LG that can shoot back. Oh, it's Oxygen. But it really comes down to sometimes just a single player. When Neuros first joined the NAL on OXG side, he was like top ranked basically, doing really well. And then he had like a weak season and then like a, like a period of time where he wasn't that kind of like same star player, you know, finger LMG kind of guy anymore. And I think some people are wondering like, is Neuros gonna bounce back and be that, that, you know, be that guy again? And I feel like he's had a great start so far in this stage. Where he really looks like he's back in like more or less peak performance. And of course, with the new changes to the, the ADS speed, the scope changes to a lot of the operators, a lot of players are still figuring out, like, okay, what are we gonna do here? What's the playstyle gonna be? And the players that get into that playstyle quickly and get, com get comfortable early, they will have a slight advantage. That might just be the case for Neuris because he has been looking solid so far in this stage. We're about to see some bandit tricking now. Love that. Maybe not. Maybe not with the Maverick cutting right. through the steel and puts Eddie in a very precarious position, and yeah, he'll get out of there about as quickly as he can. Evacuate premises. Back towards cash, he will go, and it's open now. I, did you, hmm. did you hear Rotero drone out, and then suddenly it just goes to Yaga, who's just in there, or was that just my ears mistaking me? <laughs> oh, I didn't my. hear it, no. Oh, no, not the jammer. <laughs> Come on, that's unfortunate. I, I mean, I would be miffed if I was in that position. It's genius. Mute is, an e Mute is an excellent counter to Flores, as you see firsthand. And now Yago will only have one remaining Rotero drone, which will now be piloted out unless he manages to get them unstuck from that Mute Jammer, and even then it won't be very effective. All of them are now gone. Yeah, I mean, it's Yago. burning a lot of time here. A lot of resources as well. I mean, I like this, you know, two players punching those castle barricades, you're gonna speed up the process. It, it can take a while, but uh, slowly but surely, they'll be taken care of. Eddie, though, still banning trick and jacuzzi wall. That's gonna be a pain point for the attackers because if you cannot clear out that particular castle barricade, this wall and jacuzzi might just not get opened up. The thing is, there's a Merrick available, so surely, there we go. Torch it, get the band battery, come on. There it is, wall shall be opened up. Good level of problem solving there by picking up Maverick and just kind of simplifying that process. You were right though about this timer though, Nick. You're under a minute to go. There's another line of defense too as Eddie sits in bathroom behind the mirror window on top of a mute jammer. Got a clear line of sight. Doesn't have access to a nitro cell though. So no explosive potential Ooh. to be had there. Gomez crosses the window. Hat was prepared and ready for it and he gets down. Gomez might be retrievable. Now Hat turns his sights towards construction. Final 30 seconds for OXG. Hicks Row dies to Newers. 
OXG at the windows. They need to walk on in. Newer's taking no prisoners. <laughs> Dream the kill with that one, though. It's OXG are slaughtering Luminosity. LG just reduced to two final players, Eddie and Silent, to hold against the hordes. Nitrocell goes out, Yaga dies, Eddie falls, Silent last one. He swings over in a big round from Newers as OXG was getting the diffuser down, but didn't need it in the end. Oh no, Newers is frozen now. We lost him. We lost Newers. Whenever a player has a pop-off moment, we just lose them. Spoy popped off, he's cam froze. Newers popped off two rounds in a row, he's now gone as well. But again, it really has been the newer show on the entry. And there are so many rounds in the current meta of Siege where the opening kills are just that important. Yeah, you get the map control, great, but it's about the numbers advantage because when it comes down to that bombs that execute, it's just that much easier. We saw when Dream had to walk into the bombsite to plant, there's no enemies in his path. There was one player on the bombsite bomb chassis, Master Bedroom, Dream got that kill. And the rest were just killed by Newers. Dream walks in, C4 goes out, he sprints away, goes back to plant, Newers gets the final kill. So by getting those first one or two picks, you just buy so much space for your team. And again, you can now risk losing a gunfight. You can risk certain things going wrong. The only thing that didn't really go on OXT's side is that they didn't have a lot of time. They were forced into a position where they had to rely on gun skill and win out on 50-50 gunfights because they had 20 seconds left and that was really it. And normally on gym, that's very difficult. You got, you know, for example, frost mats on the windows, maybe a mirror window. It can be hard to breach jacuzzi. Oh, 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 Yuck, are you okay? He's gone. He's in the grave. Yog has been removed from the server. He's not even here anymore. Well, you know, it could be worse. It could be Newers that died. He's 6-0. You want that guy alive to find those kills in this round as well. And this might be another round where OHC just needs to rely on gun skill. They lose the Grim. That's like your power operator. That's going to help you attack the bad basement bomb site or maybe clear out a couple of rumors. That's now gone. I think OXG need to consider their options because when they see the active roaming presence inside of stock, bar, master bedroom, they might just say, guys, hit the site, a lot of roamers. If we kill one or two guys in the site itself, we can take the entire, you know, control and go for a plank. And I like this play for Newers, playing off pace, sneaking down blue. If he finds this pick, that opens things up, but he's gonna fade away instead. Not gonna go for side rush, but maybe this will force LG to make a movement and rotate back to site and give up the room instead. That could be the angle. A phenomenal start from Newers as well. Seven kills, not a single death to his name. He's not the only player on OXG yet to die. Gomez and Diaz have survived every round so far. There's only been two rounds, so not a huge sample size, but still really goes to show you how Luminosity has struggled to even get picks to try and stay competitive. Makes me look a little bit foolish when I'd said, you know, all LG is still a top four team. This one could be <laughs> potentially close. Not the first two rounds, that's for sure. Well, you're right, but also a, a lot can separate, you know, top four from top two. It, it's a small gap. It's it's a two, you know, placement difference, but the skill level is very, very large in both EU North America and Brazil. You know, we saw, for example, WCNM, the current Fury roster, back when they were winning majors and invitationals, it's like, yeah, they're like top one or two. In Liquid, they're like top three or four. There's quite the gap, even in those small spots. OXG now looking mighty fine. They found those kills that we spoke about. LG fell back to side with the remaining players and they still have a minute to go. If Gomez finds the vertical kill here as well onto Silent, that could really seal the deal. Then they open up the hatch, last Hypers canister, Orx is here from Diaz. And again, OXG are progressing through the round, always proactively doing something. They were just sitting and waiting. It's a very active round of seats here for them. Gomez fishing for a kill now on a Moto door. As LG's three remaining players look to survive the final 30 seconds of this round, Gomez will now drop. The fire will linger in front of him. Blob and overlook just how long those flames will last from okay. the bio canisters. Down goes Kicks Row to Diaz, who has another not too far removed. Silent dies, and it's Eddie playing on the commonly known pulse spot. He's compelled into action to look over towards Church. There's pings at some of these OXG members, but Eddie needs to find them first. He will sprint over, making a ton of noise in the process. Newers dies for the first time. How many more can Eddie get? None. Gomez says that's enough. Junior Diffuser went down and it's three in a row as OXG are undefeated so far in this match. Oh man, this is like just a classic. Like, what do you do if you're LG? 
strategically great start to the round they get the first pick they got the roaming presence but then they lose a side player which forces rotations and i, I yeah let's um listen let's go uh, cash here uh bring the mirror like we talked about with the impact tracking stuff um when we go back go back to gym after this as well so let's go gym we're gonna run the mute trap we just have to fight him with our boys we're just gonna have to fight him um george just again just be worried about like your your red walk up you just pretty much have to fight that to the death um and put more pressure from below as well on that uh, bomb side as well, because they're gonna probably bring a buck, try to buck us out of cash. So make sure we put pressure from below as well. Um, now, when we go back to basement the third time around, look, let's run the two, two, one, but give up the CC walls, right? Let's just, let's fall back through main stairs. Cause look, they're not putting pressure strip side at all, right? So they're gonna allow us to uh, fall back in the site, but let's uh, kind of do it more so of like a, a kind of like a bunker defensive setup, and a mute, like a mute for the gen uh, players. So we don't get like grimmed out and stuff like that and reinforce this single blue wall as well. Let's do it more of like a fall off in the site, but let's still show a 2-2-1, two, two, but let's fall off uh, through main stairs and then we should be able to play back in the site safely. Immediate thoughts? Okay. I mean, I didn't hear most of that. I've got to be honest. I think I lagged out for a second. So I want to hear your thoughts because I didn't hear most of it. I mean, it was, it was very specific to this bomb site in particular, right? And one thing that we talk about when we when we speculate on timeouts is what is the main focus that coaches will take you through? Whether it be, you know, Mint in the previous matchup that we heard was mostly to settle down the nerves of Dark Zero, but additionally, it was to just give an overall strategy about what he saw. The Luminosity's focus was on how to tackle this very next defense. Okay. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it, but I mean, if if you're calling a timeout and it's only for a single round, and that's your your hyper focus is on one round and one round alone, yeah, there is a part of me that wonders if that's the most value that you can get from that timeout. Now, maybe it's that Luminosity doesn't really have a lot of other struggles, and they're just losing close gunfights, and they think that some strategic elements, and maybe the motivation of winning a round is all it takes. That's a question I can't answer, and I don't think you can either because we're not in their heads. Yeah. Either way, from what we've heard of the three timeouts that we have, uh, we've had, or the four timeouts, rather, that we've listened to so far today, is that there's a different approach from all of these teams, and it's quite enjoyable, and it's good for the listeners as well, as they can hear that sometimes you're not just focused on one thing. Sometimes coaches have a lot to address. Yeah, and it's one of those, like, you get one timeout, you have 45 seconds, and you gotta make a... Get the most value, the most bang for your buck. And yeah, sometimes it's an overall issue. Sometimes it's like stop tilting, you know, frustration. Sometimes it's like maybe for LG, just get this round. Just get this one victory. Get back into it mentally. Eddie gets that opening pick, shuts down Diaz. That's a great start. But it's where the worst operator that could have been taken down. It's the Thermite. So Grim is up still. Capital is alive as well. OXG, they still got the tools they need to clear out this round. The big question mark for me is, are they going to go for this Garrus attack? They have no Master Patron presence. They're looking for the roamers. They got the injured drones. And look at that! Solus tries to run away. It's a freebie for Yogg. A great play there. Simple drone. Gives the info, he swings, now back to 4v4. Eyes on Garage. Now we gotta look at Yogg and Dream here. The Grim Capital combination. What will Silent do on the Omai? Jump over, go for a kill, stay in the corner and burn down to the fire. That's the big question. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Silent 0 oh and 4 to start this match as Dream very easily reads into that. Not before Yogg has been picked off too, though, and that's your Capital. You mentioned that losing the Thermite was not a deal breaker, but slowly as you bleed this utility, OXG's shot at winning the round continues to decrease. But no Solus, no Amai, now got Rafters control. Not all hope is lost for OXG. In fact, they might be in a pretty nice spot. Oh, what? <laughs> yep. Down goes Hat to Newers. I, how do you win when Newers is hitting shots like this? You don't. Wi-Fi on the jump out, looking for something as the Diffuser goes down, but Wi-Fi will be marked this whole time. Newers eliminating Eddie, and there you go. The timeout does not work. There were some issues there for OXG, but they overcome them in triumphant fashion, and they are up 4 nothing. This is brutal. So, earlier today, I made the point that I think good attacking teams on Clubhouse can just get, like, you know, 4-2, 5-1 halves. I'm not sure I want to go the distance and say OXG are a phenomenal attacking, you know, Clubhouse team. I think it's a mixture of LG, 
struggling a little bit here. And then again, as you keep saying, Nurus is just absolutely on the heater right now, winning every single gunfight. The one time he died was in a 4v1 post plant looking the wrong direction. This man doesn't lose gunfights. So I don't want to attribute this and say, oh, these attacks are flawless. They're not. But they certainly are doing what needs to be done. And their problem solving skills, when they keep losing that early man advantage, or at least, you know, they lose that early man, that's crucial to them, it, they, they have it figured out. Like, they're so decisive. Last round, lose Thermite, as I mentioned. Not a big deal. Wall was open. They can live with that. What do they do? Hunt the Roamer, even the back. Solus off the board. 4v4. Still got power operators. And again, they don't waste any seconds. Often we see teams, previous times with DC, for example, they sit still for a lot of the attacker rounds. It's Skyscraper. It's a different map. Not a fair comparison. But, like, they're not always advancing throughout the map. OHG are always being proactive, always advancing forward with purpose and intent. It's another spawn peak from Luminosity. I... Far more than we tend to see at this level of play, at least in one particular match. And part of me has to wonder that when you go for early spawn peaks with any level of frequency, it's because either you're looking to break your opponent's spirits or because you rely partially on... Getting that early pick to win yourselves the rounds. Now, at this point, Luminosity should be throwing everything plus the kitchen sink at the wall <laughs> as winning a round has eluded them up to this point. Again, OXG, several players with only a single death. The only player on OXG with more than one death through four rounds is Yaga. This has been terribly one-sided. Because of that, you've got both Silent and Wi-Fi still searching for their first kills. And this first half is going to be over pretty quickly. You need to find them or you are just not providing anywhere near the benefit to your team as you could be. Absolutely right. OHG, though, they haven't found the other kill, nor have they lost that member either. This is more like utility-oriented setup. I like this approach from LG. They're, like, I don't want to say hiding. They're playing behind shields, playing behind reinforcements. Util, <laughs> Jaga sidesteps it. Diaz goes down instead. Wi-Fi gets a second. This is LG's potential to get their first round. And with those two picks, immediate fallback to back to bomb side. Play the numbers, play that 5v3, and secure this dub. It cannot fall away now. That would be doomsday scenario. Uh, this is the best start that Luminosity, Luminosity has had. Luminosity. That could be quite a name. They're not nasty right now, but if they They're ever were... They're not Luminosity. That's absolutely correct at the moment. <laughs> this could be a Luminosity round. Oh, boy. Why do they find these last players from OXG? You've now discovered that construction is wide open for the taking, but Wi-Fi lurks in the shadows. There goes Hat. Luminosity's first loss so far. OXG desperate to keep this close. I think oh, they know. Come onto the shoulders of Wi-Fi. He doesn't have the shotgun followed up, but he wins the duel. Three kills to his name. That's all that they will get from Wi-Fi. Look at how far back Luminosity is, Nick. They want to engage here. Optiaga, who finds a goo mine inside of logistics. And surely LG knows where this last player is. Luminosity have allowed OXG to win these first four rounds. You snatch this one away. Yaga will just keep pre-firing, but it's very limited info. Excellent patience from Luminosity as Yaga looks for a pick, and they will collapse on him at the right time. Silent getting onto the board, and Luminosity finally taking a round. Finally, yeah. Uh, it took a while, though, and again, it, it comes down to that 3v1 crossfires in the end. That looked very convincing, but there was a small point in time where I was thinking they might actually lose this, and that was when... Two OXG members were pushing towards office and they had the perfect read that the player was indeed tucked in the corner. If that gunfight goes in fair for OXG, it's a 3v3. It's totally winnable. That early round, oh, Wi-Fi, that's disgusting. This right here. If Gomez gets the kill, I could see that going in favor of Oxygen because they have office control, they have connector control, and they have Dream on the bombs at windows, kind of locking those rotations on the side itself, cutting the map in half, essentially. But... LG, they prevail. They finally win some gunfights. Wi-Fi had a big moment. The C4 into the swing, getting that 2K, beating Newers, by the way, in a gunfight. It's the first time that's happened so far. He's 9 and 2. The other death, as I mentioned earlier, was when it was a 4v1, po a 3v1 post plan with him looking the wrong way, so that doesn't really count in my book, at least. LG, I will say one thing. They keep kind of doing the same thing here on basement. Saxon Finna did an opening round. 
So the only thing I worry about them is that if they repeat the same kind of positions and utility pieces and OHT they've seen it before, they should have a pretty good idea how to counter it. Now, teams can of course run the same strat back to back if they want to, especially if they think like small things went the wrong way. If New York is just picking up three or four kills every single round, it's what you deem is the issue for you lost, of course you can play the same bomb side. But we also have to see LG play in better player positions where newers cannot just find three kills single-handedly you gotta try and trade out your bodies if you're luminosity so if newers kills one of your players you kill newers back one for one trade very worth it for defense so that's what we gotta see lg play close together it's not long ago that there were allegations of newers just being a fraud because he only played finca there was talk of him being a finca crutch but Hmm. It's been nice to see uh, not a renaissance of newers, but that he's been as dominant as he has been. I mean, hey, like you said, a beautiful sight. Ash ACOG, a lot of these players yep. that are used to these fast operators to do serious damage, to get in quickly. It is nice to see them back, and newers is showing exactly what you can do. He's taking no prisoners. Nine kills through five rounds, almost two kills per round is something that is very rare at this level of play. Let's see if he can maintain it, though, because it's not going to be as easy for him to do that on defense, especially if Luminosity can track him down, hunt him with drones, and finish him quickly, assuming, of course, that Newers will be roaming. On this map, not always a certainty that you do want to roam. As you see right now from this defensive luminosity, they are all tucked into the bomb site quite nicely. There's some players a little bit removed, like in Dirt Tunnel. But there you go. By and large, all within striking distance of the bomb site, not any extensive roam from LG. No, you're correct. They did early on, but fell back relatively early. They popped two glorified canisters as well because they ripped down those barricades. So the question now is, will Oshi have enough time? They have about a minute and five seconds when Box started doing the verticality. They gotta overcome the Kai Claws, that's where Dream on Thatcher comes into play. They have Diaz as the only real hot breacher with Yogg and that secondary can openers and the Grim. So they can open everything up. But again, time, 30 seconds. They just now start joining dirt. That's where Solus is playing. 30 seconds. They actually catch the time and you see Solus running away. If Diaz, yeah, he will go for this. Just flying dirt, they know it's safe. Wait for these seconds of position, then go for execute. Oh, oh. OXG! Don't miss. Exploding this round and what? winning flawlessly, excuse me. It's a 4k from Gomez. You barely got to finish your sentence there before OXG determined that the round was over in the first half as well. All done. 5 1 the scoreline for Oxygen. And they do it on attack. I was thinking, okay, now you're gonna go to Diaz into third tunnel, wait like five or so seconds, like get, let him actually get in the building, and then you go for execute. But literally as he enters third, I see Gomez one kill, two kill, three kill, like, okay. S Gomez, I guess, just dropped the kitchen hatch and went on a killing spree on the bomb side and just completely cleaned up. So I, I don't wanna say it was like a mistimed execute because it certainly worked, but again, the firepower on this OXG roster, it's just, it's so strong. And it's the, if you go to Europe, you look at like the current BDS roster, it's the same story there. And they are ripping you apart because you have five players off, on both BDS and here on OXG that can just always show up. Even Dream, who's a support player here, or BDS support player in BDS, they too can just have pop-off rounds, they can hit clutches, but they're also a stable support player. The drone work from OXG, we see it every single round. Someone's driving a drone, and then you got what? Newers behind, them, just chasing for kills. And they're so quick to the punches. Now we see the side swap though. Five one half OXG, well done to you. Big clappies, but... The question is, can you also hold your ground on defense? Right now, actually, they're not sure much of a roaming presence, which is very surprising given how aggressive they were in attack and how confident they were in their gunfighting skills. They're actually saying to LG, hey, we're happy to fight you on the bomb site, like 5v5 style execution, and LG will do that. They gotta drone the entire building, gotta figure out if there's a roamer. Neurosis and Solus had a roaming presence, killed the drone, fell back. Being chased here by Silent, 50-50 gunfight, but it's Nurus. It's never really a true 50-50. He always seems to have a slight advantage. And again, opening kill goes in favor of OXG, thanks to that. 
hell of a start for OXG. And uh, yep. I, again, I just got to ask the question, you know, what do you, when, when you've got a team playing like this and you've got these players playing at this level, what can you even possibly do, right? Pat, who has looked sensational before on, against tough opponents, one and six. Six row, two and five, silent. Just got his first kill a couple rounds ago. Wi-Fi, three kills, all three of them coming in the same round. Is it is it a strategic issue right now for Luminosity, or is it just gunplay? Because it seems like every time there's a straight up gunfight, OXG wins. I honestly think that LG, Silence in particular, shouldn't have chased the kill into Newers. It's like, is it worth if you if you kill the Solace versus you losing the Ash? No, it's not really worth it. Killing Solus is a slight advantage. You play five versus four, but losing Ash is like pretty much all your self-destruction and you now have one less player for the execute. So the risk versus reward is not really there for LG. They see a guy, they chase a guy, they die to that guy. Now they play four versus five, bombs that execute with only Grim, no Capital, for example. And we see that AK's position from the Kitchen Edge earlier being shot towards DS. He's in a power spot, shield towards Blue Door, can watch the hatch drop, and LG, because of that, they're rotating elsewhere. They're gonna try and breach Church with the secondary can opener. It's not ideal, impact goes out, it gets denied. They have no real plan here, it looks like. They're scrambling to get this together. Nah, just holding a right angle from inside of Moto. As LG droned out Blue. Gomez taking an awful lot of damage. Somebody managed to spot him. Kicks Rose at the bottom of the main stairs. Eddie now drops as well. Luminosity walking into church, but it's not a hope. It's not a prayer at the moment. Seconds to go. But OXG does believe in miracles. They lose two. Gomez hurt as well. OXG will need that miracle to win this round. Eddie getting the diffuser down, and well, it's almost as if the gods themselves have helped OXG, but Eddie believes as well, albeit a bit misplaced. OXG have no problem getting the final kill and hopping on the kit to go up. 6-1. <laughs> it's been such a fast game. Like, every single round, it's like you blink and it's over. It's just that so many kills happening either very early or all happening at the same time later in the round. And it really doesn't come down to executes in the typical sense, where we see like smokes and flashbangs and like cutting off lines of sight. It is a 3-2-1, go in, guns blazing, who's gonna come out on top? And LG looked like they might have had a chance in that round, but again, they were playing with one man less because Silent died early in the Ash, and they didn't get all the walls opened up to apply enough pressure onto the defensive side of Oxygen. They had to watch what? Blue, the door into Church, so Moto Door, and then Kitchen Hatch. That, that's it, that's like three angles. There's not a whole lot of pressure. When OXG attack basement, they're trying to apply pressure, you know, Dirt Tunnel, Kitchen Hatch, Moto Door, Blue, Blue Hatch. And they, again, they had five players, or they had even numbers, or they had, you know, more than the opponent. LG goes to CCTV, they got no timeout, and they also cannot really win a round so far in defense. Granted, it was their first attempt, but still, or sorry, attack rather. But uh, it only gets tougher from here. When you, when you have, like, these rounds going the way that they are in terms of gunfights, you're not going to have the most confidence if you're LG. And if you're XG, you're gonna, you're gonna, you feel on top of the world. You can go for any gunfight. You're always going to win. You have, like, all the options no, here. Like, no, 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 no. Not the no. door-prone spawn peak, dog. Dog is a worm. Yeah. This is rever the revenge. You got spawn uh, peak back in the day. Oh. There's a worm boy here. Toes? I say shoot the toes one time and fade away. You know, it's so fun. Just tickle the toes. Oh. No? Waiting for the repel instead? I mean, Yaga is getting a Ooh, fair amount of information here. No, seemingly missing an opportunity on that kill, and we can't sit there forever as Yaga decides whether to shoot away at the ankles of Silent. P90 at that distance would do very limited damage. He's still to there. Silent, so... <laughs> he hasn't moved. He's still looking for the kill. Oh, injure? Has he found it? I wasn't him. Wi-Fi has been dropped. Is that the open breach at the bottom of Garage, which will put Silent into a position where now he has to go retrieve his teammate. Oh. Can't get there in time. A nice pick on to Gomez, though, but not before Gomez finished off Wi-Fi. I like that trade. You do not want a Capital to be on the board for this yeah. execute. LG will have to do it without the smokes and without the fire. 
Yeah, it, uh, I think it's worthy as well. The only thing I didn't like about it is that that was the catwalk player. So now catwalk is surrendered in a one for one trade. In a perfect world, you know, Mira stays on catwalk, someone else finishes the kill. That's the best case scenario. This is second best. Again, 4v4, favorite typically by defense. You have Evil Eyes and the Maestro. You have 1c4, bunch of impacts. But Hap finally lands a shot, takes down Newers. He wins that gunfight, that's for sure. Oh. Oh my. That's a struggle. Dreams of Maestro main, by the way. He knows all the tricks. Looking straight up, they cannot deal with this evil eye. Again, Intel there is for OXG, but Plant and Out are limited. C4 is now gone because Newest died. They have three impact grenades and a Solus, but LG has man advantage. <laughs> this is... That's brutal. I know you're, you're going to get clowned on social media for that. And Certainly. I've, that's obviously a frustrating one. Kicks row down below, giving Luminosity the advantage for now. Eddie getting the diffuser down, only two remain for OXG. They are pinned down, they are trapped. Into the post plant now, we will go. Diaz will need to clutch. Inside of cash. LG has taken their lumps, all four players, very low. A single bullet will kill pretty much everybody. Maybe only the Ash would survive. He is worried about getting out of the doors, not even gonna get there. LG, their first successful attack. They are still very much in this. But it's a long road to walk before they can get back to the spot that they currently see OXG at. Yeah, this is a classic scenario of one thing goes wrong, one clutch happens for OXG, and it's all over. I mean, had landed a phenomenal shot, which took down the single C4 in defense. That's a big factor in that round. Solus lost the gunfight downstairs. That was a factor for Plant and I. And the Evil Eye was two saps away, by the way. Away, by the way, that's, that's so bad. It was two steps away from taking down Eddie, who was getting that diffuser down. So very, very, very small details not going the way of OXG is what makes o uh, LG able to plant with all players on a single point of health. So again, so many small things could be different and L LG will just lose out 7-1. But they will live it all around. They will fight it out. They'll gain that valuable experience. When you have someone like Hat pop off in these games, getting a bunch of kills, making the runs easy previously for LG, and now you're up against a team that really shoots back, you're learning valuable lessons that, okay, we need to have other things to rely upon. We need to be better as a team. We need to have our fundamentals, our basics, our problem solving, our strategies in order, because you're not always gonna have the easy road of simply being the better players. You're gonna have to struggle sometimes. Every team has to go through it, when you play the best teams in the league, or the best team in the league of OHD basically right now, you're going to learn a thing or two about the basics because they got that figured out, that's for sure. You got a lot of favorable bomb sites if you're OXG to go back to as well. So, yeah, you might lose cash CCTV, but in one round, you can go back to that church bomb site down below and find yourself in a favorable position. Even now, as you see, this defense upstairs. It's possible that OXG is able to win it. Even if it's not the same bomb site as before. Not terrible for the attackers. Dream goes for the swing to try and stop that hard breach. It's read very well by Silent. He cannot secure the kill. I'm going to be keeping my eyes on Eddie's Amaru as to where that operator is going to fly in. It's a shotgun combined with the SMG-11, so Eddie is likely going to go through a window and try for a pick or two early, depending on where OXG is. Or maybe Eddie, with Diffuser in hand, is going to swing in, go for the plant as quickly as possible, and oh. there you go. Yeah, that's what's going to be. Gonna be. Eddie goes right up and will begin the plant. The fire! The fire! Inside of the fire! Wait, hold on! Wait! No! What? Oh my, that was a hat's fire arrow to do all that damage. Yaga gets both the kills, not just on Eddie, but Hat as well. Grim will play the tight angle. But Yaga is still in this position, still able to receive them. LG trip up, but hold on a second here. They storm in. Now Yaga being watched, silent inside a bathroom. Two quick picks. Dream dead, but will immediately go onto those Maestro cams. Goodbye to Gomez. Newer is retaking. He was down below. They've got tons of pings. Hicks row dead. Newer knows there's one not too far off. Do you play for the post plant? Newer's and Diaz, last remaining one nitro cell between the two of them. 
Diaz not on site, neither with Newers. Newers was down below. Diaz inside of construction. Is that Maestro Cam still up? Is it feeding information to OXG? Oh, yeah. called into action. Silent with Diffuser down, stops for a second. Now it's Diaz. Just wasting time. Newers picked apart from the window. Diaz will need to clutch out. He vaults on up very narrowly, missing out. Diaz getting the pick. Now Wi-Fi needs to run on in. Diaz escaping the flash. But LG wins it at the last second. They are starting to put together an impressive run, and the two rounds are closing the gap against OXG. Oh, boy. Oh boy, that entire round is just like a roller coaster of emotions. So I, I assume the idea there was to hour up the hash, smoke off both the rotations from Master Bedroom to Gym, and then fire off those rotates too. But the fire hit the default plant spot, forced Auro to run to a bad spot, that's an impact grenade. Yawk, one taps a player onto the window. You're thinking to yourself, okay, OHT they win off a big misplay from Luminosity. But you'd be wrong to think that. Because somehow, someway, they bring it back. Silent walks to Jacuzzi Breach into bathroom, picks up two massive kills. It's stream with a single point of HP on Maestro, but those active Maestro cams can only accept the players. That's, of course, vital. And it shuts down Yawk playing that key position in the middle of Master Bedroom. And then they gain that side control. OHG, they had one thing they could change in that round, but it's a stylistic choice. Either you send the Tuberu downstairs with the C4 to try and deny the plant, or you stack up together on the bomb side as they did. They played out the 2v2, nearest side from Wi Fi on that gym window. It came in 1v2. We saw the outcome of that round. Nail biter of round, however, coming all the way down to the wire. And again, if one small detail goes in the other direction, OHT could have would have shoot the round. Could have would have shoot won the round, rather. Nurus almost gets baited here, chasing a drone, shot through the main stairs window. But again, he escapes with his health somewhat intact. He's still looking for more drones at night here on the Solace. It's kind of like the key aspect here. You want to find the drones, shut them down, deny intel, and just again, try and buy some time by slowing down the attackers. Last time LG attacked this bomb site, they were 4v5. They lost the Ash early. This time, they're going to try and make it to the bomb site with all five attackers upright. So, I missed this. Okay. Jesse J. Chick sent me this piece of information at the very beginning of the gym bedroom attack and said, despite playing Clubhouse twice already, LG have never successfully attacked gym bedroom. They are 0-3. Oh. Well, I should have probably read that before LG just won gym bedroom. Thank you still, though, to the desk for that. Now, as we said during that gym bedroom defense from OXG, they have other bomb sites they can go to that it might be successful on. Yeah, you don't just need to rely on this bottom floor bomb site that OXG were formidable on the very first defense, but the good news is that OXG gets to go here at least once more. Even if they lose it, they can go here again. After this, every bomb site will be open if they lose it. Every bomb site is actually open at the moment. So LG <laughs> has a lot of work to do to determine where they're going to attack, but the good news is you've got attacker repick. So no matter where OXG goes, LG can be prepared for that. Damn. Some good value here. Those summers doing work in the church wall. They get again. Now they get side pressure. They have hatch pressure. They have vertical pressure, but they lose that fifth player again. Silent goes down. Kicks Sarah. One HP to his and Thatcher as well. Now all of a sudden, LG went from a good looking round to a very poor one at that. They gotta execute. They got the green bees on Wi-Fi. Had finds the kill. There's still life for them in this round. Especially since Gomez has looked. Very good so far through this match, and Newers has cooled off too, and it's something that I said, this is an attacker-sided clubhouse at this point. Oh, oh OXG are dying, had a triple kill to avenge himself after that misplaced fire error on the previous rounds. Now it's Dream to clutch out, and he's been able to do this before, but the timer will be his adversary. Smokes to go over towards Moto, but Eddie is ready for it, and LG fired up, ready to win. That's a timeout from OXG. Come next. It might be the angle, actually. Calm things down, get a little bit of reset, and just like close out right now, right here. But that also gives LG the chance to also talk strategy. The risk that you got to be ready to one clean take, round here. Take it. I think we're overcomplicating it and we're forgetting some of the util, right? So we just need to reset, force these guys to execute, identify who's stopping the plant, 
And if we don't have something, use your teammates to, to, to back each other up. We just need one clean round. Like they're not doing anything crazy. They're playing default siege. They're primarily going uh, church side because they can't get dirt control. So they can't do a dirt blue. So they have to go church. So our focus utility wise needs to be stopping the church plan. I'll ban, I'll ban it. Church 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 All right. Too. So, so other than that, yeah, everything else is clean. I feel okay. I'll do it. Secret. Just let me, okay, let yeah, me play two. Works, yeah, we're going to waste time on the realm and then we can just do it. Listen, yeah, we're going to do the soft realm. You guys are playing great. It's really just coming yeah. down to the trades, so we're good. I'm going I'm, to I'm dropping the smoke here, so they're going to be able to get dirt. Can okay. we drop two walls upstairs and get the get dirt so I can K-trick it? Is that possible, guys? Uh, we can get drop the tub walls, yeah. Okay, let's drop some walls. And I, I gotta say, I really like that. They, they, again, like high level problem solving in a very efficient technical timeout. I feel like that was longer than the average like, timeout. So much was said with a lot of value, both from the coaching standpoint and the player standpoint. Where it's about, okay, guys, their focus is this. We need to counter. Classic counter play. They open up the lineup. And I, I think it's a really good read because last round, the only denial they had for the church wall was impact grenades. But the one person, I forgot who it was, who had impact, impact spare in pocket, wasn't in a position to use those impacts on the church wall. So a big miss in that previous one. Now they have Kai Tuberau. They can really slow things down, stalled out. And we heard at the very end there, they went to roam early to you know, stall for time to then further enable the wall deny later on in the round because the lower you're on the clock, the higher value Tuber out gets, the higher value the Kai clocks gets because they're hard to deal with. Then Dream also asked for help. Hey, can we spare two walls somewhere? I want to reinforce certain kind of trick. Another adaptation because you lose the smoke. It's really good stuff here for more XG. And if that's the kind of insight they have as players, adapting on the fly, then you know the feeling in the server, feeling out your opponent, that might be the reason why they're doing so well. Also, just nice to hear Redeemer's voice again. I, you know, I have very fond memories of him as a player, all the way back on his bittersweet days and was actually one of the first players I ever casted in a professional capacity, so. Mm. He's a staple of that SSG roster for so long. He's been with OXG longer now, if my math is correct, and well, I still think of him on SSG. What? What, what is Dream doing? He's better. Another, <laughs> if he'd gotten away with this, I would have lost my mind. Silent gets ever closer to clearing out fringes of this bomb site. OXG had such a heavy roam presence. They are all now being recalled to the bomb site, Nick, because Diaz is dead. LG have read into this defense of oxygen perfectly. And suddenly, OXG are the ones fighting from behind. Gomez will need to clutch out in a 1v4 as Newers was dropped, finished off. Diaz dropped earlier, dying, and Gomez can't do anything. Luminosity pushing us. To a near tie, they are one round away from sending us to overtime. This is ridiculous. These rounds are just, it, it's a coin flip. Complete coin flip. Like, we're praising our XG, you know, we see the vision, we hear the vision, it makes sense. And they kind of, they, they kind of mess up a little bit, but LG with a perfect read. Now, I want to know what LG spoke about in, in their technical timeout, you know, because when, when OXG calls it, LG can also talk amongst themselves and their coaching staff, but we only hear one side. That's the team that calls for it. So they had a perfect counter to the adaptation. It worked out beautifully. The one thing that OHD missed the mark on is that you should never allow your opponents just walk into sites like that unknown to you. You should have vertical angles from master bedroom in towards that main staircase. Half the hatches opened, half those vertical angles with the shotguns because you have mute roaming upstairs. They don't have any of that presence. What's the roam gonna do top floor if you don't have lines of sight to consist the first primary floor? Then they can just completely ignore you if they have the balls to do so. LG, they are fighting their way back into this and they are not showing the signs of frustration or the signs of like risk taking where they go, ah, oh, we might lose if we go for a rush here, guys. Let's, let's settle down and do a default roam clear. No, no. Let's go for the side rush. Let's play Nurk, sneak past the cameras, full send, go for it. And despite losing the first gunfire to Dream Side of Moto, they still fully committed. They understood what was in front of them and what the mission actually was, what the purpose was in that round. OXG now, they prepped so hard for that specific round and they lose. Now they're playing Yellow. 
it completely changed things up. This is Diaz probably gonna be like, okay, Fenrir is banned. We don't wanna play Melusi. We need to have an operator that can give us intel if they push certain areas. Those Grispot mines will do just that. The newer is after his strong start has fallen off of the edge of the earth. But again, this is yeah. just an attacker favored clubhouse. Only one round, one on defense by Luminosity. LXG are suffering a very similar fate at the moment, and they have not let this match get away from them, but are one minute and 50 seconds away from letting the match get away from them. I mean, they're also winning gunfights. Didn't happen previously. DS, danger is... Oh, okay. All right, good night. That's it. <laughs> and and th that's gonna actually slow down, maybe stall out this push significantly. They lose the ace, lose the man advantage, and they lose that crossfire, and another one goes the yeah. wrong way, but a nade kill onto Neurus. I lose that every day. To come so close, yet to go so far. Hold on a second here. Okay. Gomez and Neurus are now dead. We've still got control of top red. He is taking some serious damage trapped in the corner, but oh, the rotate. can't get past it. The rotate is a bigger enemy than anybody on the no. side of OXG. Hat will find an early grave as well, as it's a single point of HP for Eddie. LG gave so much hope to their fans to stay in this. They have come so close, and yet it sure seems <laughs> so far as Eddie desperate to try and find as the jiggle peak comes in from Diaz. Eddie cannot connect. That scorpion wants its next victim. The sting of the scorpion's tail, deadly at this point. Eddie trying to stop it, trying to keep Diaz at bay, but you can't be kept at bay. You gotta get into the bomb site. LXG laugh at that one, but. That was far too close for comfort, I am certain. Tiger side of Clubhouse, who'd have thought it? LXG prevent overtime and they pick up all three points against what looked like a resurgent luminosity. OXG could have had a very quick and relatively easy match, but then LG actually started showing up and again, winning those gunfight, and those engagements. I think it's a really sad way for, you know, that match to end, for that round to go where it was looking great, they are building the comeback, oh, they're almost there, oh, they're doing it again, and then it just falls so flat. <laughs> and on, those same on. issues... <laughs> the same issues appeared again. It's tough. What a reaction. And honestly, what a match. I feel a little bit vindicated because I thought with the way that these teams have been playing so far and where they are in the standings, this was not going to be a blowout for OXG. And after that first half, I looked like yet again, I would be eating a delicious meal of my own words. But LG picked things up. They looked far sharper on the way that they entered the map. And it wasn't just that they could get in and be quite proficient on entries. It was also that OXG made some serious blunders to not support some of their roamers. It was also that very disjointed roam upstairs when you just had yep. LG realize, hey, there's only one or two people on the bomb site. What if we just hit the site right away and force OXG to retake LG, showing that it wasn't just gun skill, but also strategy that helped keep this match close. This is as close as you can get without provoking overtime. So it's sad for LG and it's sad for LG fans, but they do deserve the title of one of the top teams of NA right now, and they showed it in that matchup against OXG. I mean, I suppose that's true. The only issue is if you're only strong on one of the two sides, that being defense or attack, it's just not enough to beat, you know, beyond top four. So if you're LG, gotta look at those defenses. Oh, she made some very obvious mistakes. So did LG. We're gonna have some time to fix those. Just as we have time, we go to a break. We'll be right back. One undefeated streak came to an end one undefeated streak lives on. While Space Station are certainly wishing they could have been the one that survived, Oxygen Esports will keep their streak alive through the first four games of their regular season. They knock off Luminosity 7-5 on club in a game that should have ended at 7-1 or 7-2 or 7-3. Even Redeemer in the timeout was like, they're just playing basic stuff. We just need to make sure we don't get trollitis at the very end. And they cure it of themselves at the last second and they win the map. So good Good job for Oxygen staying undefeated. It's a matter of getting overzealous there. As you're going up, 
on these rounds pretty convincingly. You're feeling happy, you're feeling strong, the chemistry's there, but then you start losing these rounds, and then it starts being like, oh, hold on a second. All right, let's try to fix something. And sometimes you don't even need to fix it. You just need to play it as normal as possible. And LG saw when they tried to fix it, they saw an opening in uh, OXG Strat and then immediately went for a rush, ended up winning another round and it really put OXG on the back burner. It wasn't pretty, but three points is three points, three points all right? Doesn't points. matter how you get there, they will take the dub. And I believe that's 12 and 0 so far, uh, points I mean, I wanted page. to roast Parker because Parker was like, well, I think the analysts are underselling this game and I was like well it's about to be a 7-1 Parker but <laughs> he was right it was not and it came down to the wire well I mean the biggest thing here I mean realistically the the thing that I saw out Luminosity struggle with the most mm -hmm. was the fact their trade game it was awful mm -hmm. OXG was running away with double kills triple kills or just initially just going down down the list of how many kills that they can keep netting and then LG started to go on the back foot where they again they were meeting Oxygen with that aggression that I was talking about. We talked about the attacking half. Who's going to run away with the attacking half? Oxygen did, but then now LG had a really good strong attack half. It just didn't come down to their defense. Newer's obviously having a really strong start to this map, really racking up the frags. I think he was 9-0 at one point. I'm glad Gomez did as well. Gomez is one of those players that we have talked about a lot in the past. I think he's gotten a lot better, especially over the last couple of months so playing on, you know, God, that numerous half was teams. Nasty. That was nasty. Um, but all in all, like, I think he really started to show up and have that great kill uh, kill death game that I've been waiting to see him have. I think he's been having a lot of impact in the early round. He's just been dying a lot. So his KD's been overshadowed at times by like guys like Newers or Diaz. Um, it was a great game for him. I think a lot of people would agree that this game probably ended way before it had any chance to really get close down to round 12. It probably could have been over as a 7-1 or a 7-2, somewhere around that time zone because of the way that LG were playing. And those attacks didn't really look that great. Round 9 in particular was a real doozy. Jacob, round 9 was one of the rounds of all time. And you know what? <laughs> there were some plays in that round. It was a, it was a gym bedroom uh, attack. And as I had told Parker, LG had never won this bomb site before. So at the very start, Eddie goes up and then we see Hat Capital Firebolt, his own teammate. You may think this is a mistake because it doesn't actually deal enough damage that he gets killed by the by the impact. But this is tactical. We didn't see the rest of the round there. But it prompted Silent to then run in through a bathroom, grab a massive 2K. Oh. Massive round from him. Listen. Huge big brain, big brain play from Hat. Then we see him start to stick the plant goes down to a 2v2. He decides, no, I don't need to stick this plant. I need to swing. He swings, dies. Wi-Fi then, perfectly enabled, this is all tactical, to come through and then jump out, knowing that the repeak would happen from construction. It was a genius play. It was a genius round from okay. LG. <laughs> Just absolute masterclass siege uh, at all turns, despite what it may have looked like. Absolutely, and that was beautiful. I love that you just broke that down entirely. The funny thing is why we're laughing here is because this was Hat, literally, <laughs> at, when he cappy towed and was watching Silent Burn. This was Hat outside that window, just watching it happen. That was tough. <laughs> oh, the more he, he, he comes up the hatch, and then he's just watching his own teammate burn in flames like, ah, oh, crap. Dude, what? there's been there's been situations where I've like accidentally thrown a nade or something, and like, yeah. I know my teammate's about to die, and I'm just like, <laughs> it is what it is. Well, it's not, just, we'll bring it back to base here. It's not just a matter of LG beating themselves. It's also Newers just continuously kicking the crap out of every opponent he's played so far. And today was no different. He finished with like 15, 16 kills on the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he heard you saying Ashton was the best player in the NAL. And he's right, coming for you now. He definitely took He took it personal. But it. Newers has always been a phenomenal player. I mean, even yeah. back when I originally played with him, we picked him up. I mean, he's ex excelling. That was when he was at his best, that Charlotte Major I mean, form. He just doesn't really fall off. He just keeps getting better. And Fox said it best is, you know, sure, he, he's getting older. Things are, you know, maybe not being as much in some areas, but then there are other areas where he's improving a ton. And I think what are you you're shooting, seeing it dog? throughout. I'm what, not really. What are you shooting, dude? That's Wall e. hacks. That's knows e. he's there. That's a Z. But no, I mean, Newers is a phenomenal player. I don't think he's been talked about a ton as much as maybe some other players have throughout this stage. But this, it kind of goes into the fact that Newers always plays very well. It's not something that's like mind numbing that, oh, Newers is doing really well. Newers is on top yeah. of the leaderboard. It's kind of just normal at this point. Fair play. Let's talk to Dream on the interview real fast. Brother, you got the over uh, the undefeated streak going for four games in a row now, which has to feel great. But were you at all worried about Luminosity coming into this game, or did you think they had a lot of hype, but it wasn't really deserved? Um, I mean, we are we always take every opponent seriously. No game's a free game, especially not in the NAL. So, uh I mean, they're not overhyped. They're they're a decent team. I think they're just a little inexperienced, and they just got a lot to learn. Now, 
Dream, what was going through your guys' head? You guys obviously went up 6-1. It was looking really good. And, I mean, I've been there with you, so I can only imagine what you were feeling like. But just run th everyone through, like, what, what's going through your guys' heads once it's like, okay, we're going to win. Oh, wait, we lost a round. Okay, whatever. We lose another. Oh, okay. All right, now it's getting bad. Like, focus <laughs> up. Like, what's going on in that? I mean, it, I mean, that's kind of my job is to keep the team, like, mm -hmm. level-headed. Even even when we're going down like that, I'm like, guys, it's fine. Like, we got this next round. Like, don't, don't worry about it. We're going to be all right. And it's just keeping the team, like, on the same page, making sure we're, we're like, running through the strats, like – just playing the best of our ability and just close it out. I Absolutely. think we got a little o we got a little uh, overconfident, to be honest, when we went up 6-1, started doing some uh, maybe a little, <laughs> a little, a little silly. Trolly. Yeah. <laughs> so we just dialed it in. I mean, we closed it out. It doesn't matter the score line. We got the three points, so uh, I don't care. Three points is three points, Dream. But I, I do want to say, you know, you come into Clubhouse, you've seen LG play multiple Clubhouses throughout the stage already, and we already earlier today saw a bit of an upset with Los taking out uh, Space Station on the uh, on the Clubhouse. Does that worry you at all? When you see a map that you've seen your opponent play so many times, do you start thinking, oh shoot, they're going to be pulling out some new stuff here? Or are you thinking, great, you know, we've already seen them play this map twice? I mean, we, we already saw them play it twice. Uh, they haven't seen how we play club, so I mean, it was just simple. If they want to play club, we're going club. We're, we're a good club team, and we can handle whatever whatever they throw out. Yep, that's why I picked them. Just sure. for that wording right there. <laughs> Literally why I picked them. Mitch, the master negotiator, I hear it. One more question for you, bro. Coming into this game, you had three wins against teams that were coming into the day overall, bottom three in the league. And now at this point, you're sending LG to the Shadow Realm, and maybe they'll be bottom three, bottom four, based on how other results go today. You have a much harder strength of schedule going into these last best of ones that you have to play. Is it? I, I'm just curious because they, they there's one style to play at the top level and another at the bottom level. So how well do you think what you've done through these first four games is going to translate when you face those tougher opponents? I mean, the first three games that we played of the season, uh, in my opinion, were like dominant victories, like 7-3, 7-4, like whatever. Um, so I think translating that into better opponents, I think the it'll be a little bit closer, maybe, you know, like a 7-5 maybe, but uh, we'll still take the dub. I mean, we have Newers, I have Diaz, I have Gomez, I have Yogg. Like, I don't even need to shoot my gun. They're going to kill everybody. Forget Redeemer. That'll be fine. Yeah, forget oh, Redeemer. Forget those guys. <laughs> we don't forget anymore. Forget those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you said it yourself, three points to three points, no matter the score. Mitch, again, congratulations. We'll see you later, all right? Thank you. Three points is three. In their case, it is 12. They're the first team in the NAL to crack double digits in the amount of points that they've got the stage. And they seem like they're on a roll, but I just want to see how they fare when they face the Space Stations, the M80s, and the Sonics of the world. Well, I mean, I think he also said it best there, too, of going into that game specifically against LG is, you know, if they want to take Clubhouse, sure, they haven't seen ours, and we've seen it now twice, and that's what I was worried about, which is why I went, eh, when I saw that map. <laughs> well, because it was like, you only can play a map so many times back-to-back -back that... There's really nothing that you're going to do that's going to surprise anybody. Yeah, and although they've now gotten maybe the easier teams out of the way and their opponents coming up will likely be more difficult, I do still think that, like, they've gotten themselves a good enough bed of points and they can feel pretty confident going into these next couple of games that, you know, even if you lose a couple of these matches, you're still almost guaranteed to make playoffs. You still should be looking really, really good. So take these uh, next couple of matches, although they may be harder, to learn about your opponents a bit more, improve your game a little bit so that you're perfectly ready for playoffs. They're in a great spot right now. The thing is, for most rosters under OXG, They'll get off to a really good start, drop off a couple games right before playoffs, and then in some cases, miss a major entirely. So what they'll need to do is make sure that they keep their foot on the gas for the rest of this stage. Speaking of foot on the gas, Sonics have been on and off it a little bit so far this stage, and Beast Coast don't even know where the ignition is. So we'll figure out how their game is going to go in game four coming up next.